Today I want to share a very important topic to you. This is one of the hardest issues in religion and in the Bible. Uh, the complex book of Revelation, you know, we call it complex. But actually now that um, uh, it's already been revealed by God, the, the meaning of Revelation and now we, we can understand it clearly, simply, um, because of the understanding that's given by our Lord God. I hope you enjoy this lesson and thank you very much to all.
Hello guys, so we have been talking about the, the book of Revelation, which is very hard to understand, you know, for some people. But now, as I've said, uh, with the help of God, we've cracked all the secrets of Revelation. Because the book of Revelation is parallel. It's confusing when you read it, but if you're going to plot it, uh, to make a map of it, to plot it, it's parallel. And if you know the other verses that links to it, then it, it will be very clear. For example, Revelation 6, the seven seals. The one, two, three, four seals is already finished. The fifth seal is the return of our Lord Jesus Christ, the first resurrection and the 1,000 years reign of our Lord Jesus Christ. It's also connected to other verses in Revelation. The sixth seal Actually, the sixth and six and the seventh seal seems to overlap a bit. Darkness, the blood moon, stars falling, asteroids, uh, clouds of heaven receded, which is the result of uh, an asteroid impact. Um, so inside the sixth seal and the seventh seal, there will be asteroids impact, which is the, the seven trumpets and the seven balls written in Revelation. So all of this is inside the sixth and seventh seal. So darkness, blood, moon, stars falling, which is asteroids, clouds of heaven receded, the effects of an asteroid impact, and great earthquake. Of course, if there's a very, very big rock thrown onto the earth, you know, there will be a big earthquake. That's why in the book of Revelation it said, all the mountains was leveled, all the cities wiped out, big mega tsunamis. And the people, the mighty people, the generals, the kings, the princes, they hide on, on the tunnels. Modern underground shelter, you can see it on Google. They're building much, many, many right now, you know, the rich people. So they hide inside it to survive. So this is all in the future. Uh, yeah, Revelation 7 also is explaining Revelation 8, 3 to 5, uh, the trumpets, it's parallel. We take it as a literal seal, a literal mark, you know, a literal seal. Why? Because there's an event in Ezekiel, Ezekiel 9, 4 to 6. You know, like when the Lord God is so angry to Israel, the ancient Israel, because of the idol worship, because of disobedience, He let others, uh, other kingdoms, empire to conquer it, to finish it, kill everyone, you know, destroy, destroy Israel. And there's an event in Ezekiel 9, 4 to 6, that God sent an angel to put a mark, to put a mark, a literal mark, to those people who are good people, who, who lament about what's happening to ancient Israel. And, and so it's a literal mark. And these people who are marked will not be killed. We understand that the 144K seal, which is according to the Bible, is the tribes of Israel. We understand that um, it's not only talking about the literal uh, uh, literal tribes of Israel or bloodline of Israel because in the Bible the, the Bible is talking about an olive tree you know like you were grafted if you are not Israelite you are grafted if, if you believe in the words of the Lord Jesus Christ you are grafted to the tree of the Israelites so uh, you are considered you are considered to be a part of the olive tree or or, or children of Abraham so we understand the one, 144K that is sealed or will be saved in Revelation 7 is not literal bloodlines of the, of the Israelites. It could be anyone. It could be from any nation. These are the obedient people, the chosen ones. It could be you. It could be me. Uh, another evidence of that is Cain. The mark of Cain, which is in Genesis 4.15. God uh, gave him a literal mark. A literal mark to warn the people, do not kill him. So, we take it as literal. 
Revelation 10 and Revelation 11 is parallel. I'm going to uh, explain to you one by one. So, Revelation 10, angel, robe in cloud. So, the verses, the answer to this is Exodus 43.3. Our Lord God is always with them, following them in a cloud. Rainbow on head. Revelation 4, 2 to 3. Face like the sun. Matthew 17, 1 to 2. It's our Lord Jesus Christ. He transfigured. Legs like pillars. The temple of Solomon. You know, the temple of the Israelites built by Solomon. Uh, Jeremiah 52, 20. The temple pillars. 2 Chronicles 3.15, 2 Kings 25.16, parts of the temple is the molten sea. So the temple has two pillars and a molten sea. Uh, the angel shouted, and seven thunders spoke, you know. So we take this at, as, as teaching the true commandments of God. This angel, or the Israelites, or the nation of God have the correct commandments of God or the correct gospel. Seven thunders spoke. You know that the Israelites and until our Lord Jesus Christ came, they, they preached the gospel. They preached the gospel. The apostles, the disciples, our Lord Jesus Christ. And the result is the seven churches of Revelation. You know, Pergamum, Smyrna, Teatira, um, Laodicea. So these are the examples. So the seven thunders is spoke. So when the angel or the Israelite or the nation of God shouted or preached the correct gospel, the result is the seven churches in Revelation. The seven thunders is spoke or the seven thunders answered the preaching. So that's the meaning of Revelation 10. In Revelation 11, the two witnesses is a parallel, parallel, it's parallel to Revelation 10. The two witnesses, or the two olive trees, you can read in the chapter. Two olive trees. On other verses, the, the olive trees is uh, Judah and Israel. So it's the same. Revelation 10 and 11 is the same. And one more thing, the seven trumpets and the seven bowls, Revelation 16, they are para parallel. They are the same. They are the sa describing the same event. God wants us all to inherit the promises. What's that? Eternal life. Eternal life. Just like how God is started to create humanity in Eden. We are immortals, but because of sin, we die. But if we follow the commandments, if we follow the gospel that we are sharing to you, we will achieve the promises of God, which is eternal life. And there are verses saying that our citizenship is in heaven, not here on earth. So all these promises are true. And the plan of God is to brought us up there. All that believe in Satan, to the wrong teachings, the idols, the idol worship, immorality, um, sexual immorality, uh, lies, all of these bad things, thievery, all of them, all of these people doing this will be left here on earth. And this earth will glow like the sun, you know, as punishment to the demon, to his angels, to the fallen angels, and to all the bad people. But all that obey the commandments, all who will understand this and the one that we are sharing to you and obey it, will inherit the eternal life. We, we, we will go back to Eden, you know, from in Genesis. God wants to give it back again to us because God is love. So that is what we wanted you to achieve, you know. That's what we wanted you to achieve and teaching you. That's what I, I was telling this church is not about anything else. It's not about uh, anything else in this world. It's about you achieving that promise. That's the mission of this church. Thank you very much.
May God bless everyone. Thank you.